Hello everyone, welcome to this session which is an, an organized by DSC, NIT Rautkela and WebBiz with the help of MLH. I'm your instructor today, Krishnan Shu, and I'll be sharing with you some fundamentals of web development today. So as you can see, uh, the first screen, what will you learn today? Uh, we'll learn structure and syntax of HTML and CSS, the basic structure and syntax, and we'll build a personalized website, a basic one, which will help you get acquainted with these uh, uh, these languages and uh, the stuff. And we'd also learn about important HTML elements, some important CSS properties, and basically how to ex uh, deploy your website and show it to other people around the world. So yeah, why does this matter? Why do we need to learn HTML and CSS to learn web development? Because they are used in every website which has been around there since the World Wide Web started. These are the skeleton and the backbone of web development. And without them, uh, you can't uh, make a website easily. Like there are other frameworks available, but they are too hard to learn. Like Flask and Django is available, but you need HTML and CSS, which are the basics of web development to even understand them. So, uh, like, uh, we know that uh, many websites use complex animations and graphic designs, which you all uh, like to see on your computers. Like, you are amazed by this website, which has some complex animations and stuff like that. So, where does that come from? First, you need to understand the basics of HTML and CSS, which are applied to lay down a skeleton for such graphics. And then you can understand what all other languages like JavaScript and TypeScript, which are used there, or, uh, or other frameworks, uh, which are much advanced to be covered in one session. So we'll just uh, cover HTML and CSS code. And finally, you will be able to deploy your website and show it to others. So this is the table of contents as we'll go, go through it uh, again and again to revise what we are doing. and. Uh, First, we'll uh, go through intro to HTML and CSS. Then we'll add some content to our website. Then we'll style our website. Then we'll customize it with our own colors and uh, custom CSS. And after that, we'll have a review session and, uh, and a Q&A where you all can ask your doubts. I hope that's clear to everyone. So uh, this is a sample website you can see. If you have registered with the uh, MLH, you will be getting these slides with, uh, with the registration. And you can go to this link to see uh, the website you will be building. This is the website uh, which we'll be building. Like This is the uh, basic front page with, uh, which will look like this. And uh, obviously, we'll use uh, the content will be different. We'll not use uh, Ada Lovelace. So next. So first thing, first thing we'll uh, do is we'll make an account on glitch.com because uh, we are using glitch because glitch is this amazing uh, ID which I have started using now the, because of MLH. So this is this amazing uh, ID with in which you do not need any other text editor to code and then you launch a server to see your website. So it's a like very hasty process. So with Glitch, you can easily code in your web browser. You don't need any extra development environment and you can see the results live. I'll show you the Glitch, Glitch home page. Please inform me if I'm going too fast. So yeah, uh, I have already made an account on Glitch and signed in. So after uh, signing in, wait. Yeah, after signing in, uh, you'll go to this URL. You'll go to this URL, mlhlocalhost.host slash first website remix. You can check this URL from the slides which you have been provided. And uh, upon opening this URL, if you have signed in, you'll get this screen. Yes, if you can see the glitch homepage. So yeah, you can see here, what is your name, hacker, let's build, build something cool together. This is the homepage. This is the basic site that will be uh, used as a template. And upon it, we'll be building our own site. So after that, uh, when you open the glitch account and you have this screen open, uh, you have this screen open. 
which has written what is your name hacker because this is a starter file click remix your own so one thing i like about glitch is that it has these uh, it has these templates which you can find easily free templates which are not too complex to understand these are easy going templates and you can click on remix your own and it will load up a project for you which will use the template so yeah this is this is what an html code looks like and we'll go through it slowly explain everything to you so first uh, first we'll do what is you can see this show button here preview your app let's see what happens when we click this i'll i'll show it next to code you can you can show it in a new tab also like i'll pre i prefer next to code to see real time changes but you can use in a new window and if you can see this screen this is what it looks like what is your name hacker let's build something cool together and a glitch button so this is a blank website right now because there isn't any content but it is it is there it is hosted by glitch you can read the name uh, you might not be able to read the name but you, you can see this is a uh, in a new tab the website is here so we'll go back to the code oh sorry uh, no presenting sorry for that yeah i guess you can see see the code now see the code now okay yeah we can yeah so uh, uh, if you are unclear or have doubts about something feel free to drop in the chat so that we can okay. yeah yeah if you, have, if, you, if you feel if i am going too fast or if i am wasting a time explaining something which is trivial to you you can collectively put something in the chat and we, uh, i'll react to it and at the last we'll also have a we'll also have a q and a session so so let's make some changes that <laughs> to see if this code works like let's put our name right i'll put my name and instead of this so yeah, i have changed some bit of code and let's see if it is if it is working or not yeah you can see here it shows my name and it has changed this content too so yeah this works this works so th that is why i like glitch you can easily change content and uh, check the changes in real time unlike other ids where you run the code on your id and then you switch to the uh, chrome or other web browser to check if it is working or not glitch makes this process quite hassle free so uh, we have reviewed the changes and now we'll e easily go through what all this is what is you are screen uh, what you are seeing on the screen what all this is first we'll go through the files which are shown here okay so one by one uh, this is your like if you have ever used a project sharing system like github or uh, even like for example in your school in a school if you have a group project how do you make it you have one folder where you put all the resources right you have one big folder you have you put all the resources in that and uh, you use the resources according to your need so this is one big folder like that and these are the files so what these files are about like assets is a folder which contains any assets which will uh, we will use in our website we might use in a website for example images music uh, what what else it can be like pdf files for example you want to make a website from which people can download past year je question papers so you can upload your assets like pdf files here and uh, music here images which will be used in your websites so asset folder is for that readme readme is a file wait i'll close this 
yeah so readme is a file which if other users uh, like if you share this pol folder publicly like if this is open source and like you have not kept your code secret and uh, this is open to public the readme is the file from which your uh, the other users or other developers will know what your site is about and navigate through your code easily for example uh, this is a standard readme which is provided by glitch already you are, you can feel free to edit it so what you can see here is that it is uh, it is showing your project and then about the files what this file is about and uh, like readme.md this is uh, that's this file where you can tell people what your cool website does and how you built it like if you have projects you like write a project report right how you build the project uh, uh, like if you are building a one night monster it is a popular school project in which you have fun pulp lightened by uh, batteries and it looks like a monster so when you uh, write a report about it so you write now like these were the uh, uh, these were the material required for the project Th this is how i built it the circuit diagrams so this is like the report for your project what what did you need what these files are about so index.html we usually name the front end page the home page the landing page of a website as index.html it is a standard convention there is no uh, compulsion to name it that way but .html is like firm you have to write .html for browser to understand that it is a html file okay so you can see this is an html file file and what html contains is the skeleton of your website L like the ground level structure of website on which further resources and further frameworks can be used to stylize it or provide functionality but the basic skeleton and the structure of your website is provided by html okay moving on moving on what these files are like this is the media queries dot css and style dot css so css as i told you earlier is also an important language to learn while learning html because if html provides a basic skeleton css is uh, the language that helps you uh, refine the skeleton like it is used for designing mainly like adding uh, content uh, designing the content of your website so here two css files are provided to you style.css which is the main style file uh, in which you can edit your body and height and etc and also css is known as cascading style sheets and html is known as hypertext markup language if you didn't know that media queries.css so uh, we will not go into this today just so you know it is it is media queries files is used to uh, make the website easier on easier to look on to make the website responsive basically and by responsive i mean that uh, if i resize the window like if i am viewing a facebook on in on the uh, you know a desktop or a computer and if i am uh, viewing the facebook on my phone the url is same we go to the same site but it's the dip, it's different the ui like you you see there is a different navigation bar for facebook on phone but different navigation bar for facebook on uh, the desktop so how do they do that they use they actually use media queries media queries uh, do what they stylize your website according to the device you are using they use some properties like the width of the viewport what means the screen you are seeing that desktop screen you are seeing right now on your computers or phones this is the viewport of a browser so they use these uh, queries and uh, these these terms to stylize the website and make it pretty looking on all devices right so first we'll jump into html okay so from here first we'll look at the basic html what is it HTML contains something called tags. Okay, so what tags are? Like they, uh, these are this 
keywords written inside these uh, angular brackets that tell browser what this particular portion of code is about okay so also uh, html has this shortcut if you are using any uh, ide that supports html most of them do uh, you can type this doc type html and it will automatically generate a basic html page for you like i'll show you the example of a basic html great yeah can you see this can you see the change screen so you can see here doc type html and after that uh, this is what comes if you type doc type html the id automatically recognizes usually the, nowadays ids come with uh, artificial intelligence embedded into them so they they are now predicting codes also so so it recognizes that the user is uh, going to write in html and it provides a starter file so you can see the starter file contains html tag which is the this is the opening tag this is the closing tag i'm sorry this bar must be coming in between i'll show you on the other screen it, yeah so uh, this is the opening tag html and this is the closing tag with a backslash so most of the tags in html are closed this way like uh, once you uh, write the keyword inside these angular brackets and after you write the code which is supposed to be there in between these tags you you write another tag which is just the same one but with a backslash this tells browser that this code is now closed this block is now fixed and you have to operate under this only like if i write some code here like uh, browser will not recognize it as html because it is not inside these tags okay so next next we'll next we'll go to head tag so what head tag is about is that it contains information about your website basically information which is not visible to the uh, viewer but to other developers who might be working with you or to the browsers in which you upload your website and they run it so uh, here we can see some tags did anyone turn their mic on? Okay. So, yeah. So here you can see some tags. Like this is the title tag. And what happens is the title tag, you write your website's name. Okay. Like let me show you what title tag does. So uh, what title, hello, am I audible? If my voice is not clear, you can. Yeah, you are audible, Krishna. Okay, okay. Okay. So yeah, what title tag does it, when you, uh, when you see a browser screen, what is there? Like there's this website, then there is a tab on a tab which shows the URL, the title, the website name. So title tag does that. Uh, like if you enter like if I've entered this and I show it in another window if you can see this okay you might you might not be able to see this but you can try it on your own website uh, if you add the title tag and uh, enter something in between it will be visible on the browser tab I guess it is not sharing Sorry, I guess whenever I close the tab, it doesn't share, it stops sharing. Yeah. So after title tag, we'll come to meta tags. What meta tags do is tell the browser how to render your website, which basically means they tell the browser how many, how much of processing power to use. If, uh, if the website is too heavy to load, do we need to use graphic card? Like these type of stuff is told to the browser by meta tags. How your website will be rendered basically then then come the uh, link tag link tag are the tag which link your website with other files any type of files 
for example for using css we need to link this css to this web page like browser will not automatically recognize if these two are in the same folder so we use the link tag as follows we write uh, angular brackets link which is the keyword rel equal to style sheet what is the relevance of this uh, of this file we are mentioning it is a style sheet and when we use another keyword href ref i i might pronounce it wrong but href is used to link anything to your browser sorry anything to your html page like if you want to add a link or a, a hyperlink href tag is used so what we are hyperlinking is slash style.css which is the location of this style.css file and what is the type of this file text slash css it is a text slash css file similarly media queries is also linked and okay now you see these two link tags are a bit different than the previous ones what are these so font font dot google dot api and cdn dot bootstrap dot com these are frameworks what frameworks do is provide you the resources provide some resources for your website which will be heavy to load if you are uh, having them on your computer like the uh, like what they do is they store the resources in one server which is globally accessible and they provide you the link to that server so you can easily go to that server and extract the resources reducing the burden on your computer so font google is used for fonts different fonts you can easily if you want to use it in your website you can search for font uh, google fonts uh, google fonts css file see or google fonts css cdn cdn is full form for code delivery network and uh, and bootstrap is a framework which is used for designing websites here we are using bootstrap for a library which is it has called font awesome so for what font awesome has is uh, it has this uh, really good uh, it is this really good icon library like for in like the website you see with uh, links to instagram and linkedin and facebook they have these uh, small icons which you can click so how do they get those icons they don't store the images on their computer that will be very like you will need to apply a lot of css to get that straight so instead they use font awesome font awesome easily lets you borrow the library uh, borrow the icons and images from there which are uh, available you can check it on google you can search for bootstrap font awesome and the version we are using is 4.7 and both of these are css files so you can see how long this link is it is not rememberable or like same for every time you need to go to the google and search for it okay so next next what comes is body tag what body tag has is the content of your website it is not a, a self closing tag body tag also needs two tags here like uh, angular brackets body and to close this backslash body angular brackets uh, inside angular brackets so uh, so yeah one more thing we we saw these tags like meta tag and link tag which do not needed a closing tag right so we call these tags self closing tags which do not need a closing tag there are many such tags in html which we will come to discover later as we move forward so let's move forward and see what else do we have here. so yeah uh, i explained you what else is in the head tag so we'll come to body tag now so in body tag you can see this h1 what does this h1 mean this h1 is actually a tag for heading and uh, h1 is the largest heading tag by that i mean let me show you the code to help you visualize easily yeah so you can see like i have not entered any information about what the font size should be so why is this font already in bold and uh, uh, larger than this one so this is because it has been put inside a heading tag or a header tag sorry heading tag not header tag it's a heading tag 
so it is uh, it ranges from h1 to h h6 so i'll show you example for comparison we do h2 yes you can see it auto completes the code too i'll enter my name again so you can see this there is a size difference and like for uh just for like h1 is the largest h2 is smaller than h1 and so on till h6 you can see how small is h6 yeah this is the smallest heading size for like if you have like large articles or long content you can use this depending on the kind of website you are building so basically these are header tags and what does this tag mean p and then we have some sorry uh, this p we have some content here and then this is closed so this is the paragraph tag we actually write paragraphs of uh, like if you are writing an article for your blog you will uh, you will contain this article inside this paragraph tab okay so the long pieces of content are always inside the paragraph tab and uh, it is not like the header tag that has many variations you need to style it on your own okay and uh, what does this mean this is this is just we'll come to it later but this is just to allow this glitch button on our website which is kind of required by the glitch if you are building it you can easily remix view source and embed this app on other codes or other websites if you want that's what this button is for and we'll come to it how this is styled and why it is there and what all is written first uh, one more important thing i want to tell you you see this faded out text yeah this is what we call commenting in code so commenting is a very useful tool if you are uh, learning to code because not only for uh, you uh, it will also help others who read your code to decipher what you have written and what does that particular program or part of program does how do you comment in html is you like uh, start an angular bracket then an exclamation mark two hyphens then write what you need to comment like i'll just write comment another hyphens and then closing it with the angular bracket so this is how a comment is done in html basically comment is the code which is not read by browsers like it is for our own purposes if a browser goes through uh, this html file and start reading like okay this is html this is head this is meta tag after it will come to this p tag it will not go to this line it will directly go to this div tag okay that's what comments are for it will help you make notes in your inside your uh, website uh, inside your code so that you can easily even after weeks of uh, like leaving your code uh, and not uh, using the not building that project if you, after weeks you come back you can easily see what changes you had made why uh, what these programs were for etc i hope you get the point if there is any doubt at any point do write it in the chat i'm checking it yes dev i'm i'm sorry i'm wrong cdn is the full form for content delivery network sorry i was wrong thank you for correcting me so i'll be checking the chat if you have any doubts you can easily, you can write there and we'll also have a we'll also have this q and a session at the last and also one important thing i i will also share some of my secret tips for you if you want to build your dream website or if you have seen some particular website that you want to build like you want to build a instagram clone so how do you do that i'll, I'll show you in the last if you stick there so ne uh, next after css will come to after html will come to css okay so yes this is very less css you can see because we have not we don't have any content for our website so we haven't uh, styled it so what uh, see this is this is called a css rule set okay so css rule set has these uh, three uh, particular elements which are common yeah like if i show you this example 
this h1 is called a css selector okay so selector is uh, a selectors are those uh, particular css elements which help you select the elements from html like that's why it's called selector i have named it h1 because i want to style h1 from here okay that that what is called a selector and what is a property this is a property this is a property these are values that we can change of an element that we have set to style i have set h1 to style what value should i change of h1 should i change the font size should i change the color should i add a stroke so here i am changing the color so color is known as the property okay and this this is actually hexadecimal code for this particular which uh, particular color which you were seeing so this is a property uh, this is the property and this what you are seeing after sorry after the colon is the value of the property like here margin 3 view width it is the property sorry it is the value of the property it is this basic english which i as you will understand it what this is called it is a selector it specifies which element we need to style then selectors have properties which we can change and the values values are the pro values which these properties are set to okay okay now uh, i already told you this whole block selector and these braces Uh, curvy braces and inside that these properties they form a CSS rule set and uh, and one more important technical thing that this whole thing when you assign a value to a property this is called a declaration okay these declaration make a rule set you can see this is a declaration this is a declaration okay so now we have uh, i guess we have covered the basics of html and css so i guess we should be adding some content to our website right yeah so uh, so like what shall we edit like okay i'll i'll change this let me write something about myself okay i am now sorry about that my keyboard is a bit rusty change this let me see if it is the the content is changed yes the content is changed you can you can if you are following the tutorial along the webinar along you can change yourself the heading to your name and uh, the intro to uh, whatever you like okay whatever you like to add and and after that we'll uh, i think uh, we should add an about section right we should add an about section so let's add another heading here let's add another heading sorry you can see it auto completes the code about okay now it says this ab about and what shall we add in about i'll add some text here so the code is, i'm doing it not a very clean one but i hope uh, i'll keep it spacious so you can understand it that's why i'm not writing in one line although it should be like this that's why that why we should indent it properly but i am keeping it like this so you can see the different uh, headings and paragraphs i am about to write okay so i'll write something about myself
so yeah you can see i added an about section here you can follow along if you want be easy okay okay just wait a second i guess my internet is a bit lagging so wait Yeah, I'll I'll just copy paste the stuff. I've already written it down, so you don't have to see me typing slowly. Yeah, you see, I, I pasted uh, some content from my original portfolio here, and you can see it was automatically uh, put into this beautifully structured paragraph. So this is what I'm talking about: how media queries are used. Like, if you see, I'm resizing this window. it is automatically resizing the paragraph right that's why that's where it helps okay so after that after that what should we add now let's add a projects panel to okay the good projects panel looks great on portfolios so i'm again using a i'm again using this h2 heading you can reuse it again and again it doesn't matter much to the browser as long as it is it is in correct syntax so uh, the reason i'm using is because i guess about and pro projects have almost similar re relevance in this site so projects sorry what's spelling yeah you can see this change is here You know what? I'll shift to a new window. Yeah, I first edit the code, and uh, you can so you can see the changes here, and then I'll explain the code to you. Okay. Just. A second. I hope you can. see the code again it's not getting boring seeing me typing slow <laughs> yeah so now uh, we have what you can see is i have added some new tags here right so what do these do let's first check the result can you see this result the projects uh, heading is visible and under that you can see there is a list okay wow where did that came from so let us analyze the code okay so this tag is known as uh, the list tag and uh, this is sorry 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 yeah this is a um, unordered list okay ul is the tag for unordered list that's why you can see here that these dots are here instead of numbering i could have used numbered projects but i've used this so this tag is used for unordered list okay so after that uh, uh, using the ul tag we need to provide the elements to the list right you you cannot use an empty list what the point then so this li tag list element this tag is used for the list elements and under that uh, i could have simply written project one but i used heading so that it is written in bold that makes it look uh, a bit nicer okay so this is what an ordered list is and if i show you another example like if i if you want an ordered list i could simply change this to ol ordered list ol and you will see the changes like 1 2 3 okay this is now visible the bullet points uh, are there bullet numbers so yeah so I'll, i'll keep it unordered it looks better that way right 
yeah so so let's uh, let's add a paragraph tag to describe some projects what we have done so under the list tag i'm adding one paragraph tag here it auto completes this right i hope it is uh, the distinction is clear right you can easily identify which tag is under which one like how we are closing it because i'm not writing it in uh, one line because you can easily see here right okay so what shall be right is sorry 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 it is in for about project 1 right it is in for about project 1 let's copy this and under each list item let's create a paragraph tag again I hope you are following along If you have any doubts feel free to write them in the chat section so it is info about project 1 project project 1 does not seem right for everyone yeah so now i uh, you see the benefit of glitch i have never saved the project for once and like i can see the changes immediately yeah that's why uh, i prefer using glitch to other ids so yeah you can see the project one i have added the uh, info and it is visible and then for project 2 and project 3 it is structured like this because i added the paragraph tag under the list tag so it it, it is treated like uh, you know a ladder step by step the browser goes through the code and interprets it the way it is meant to be okay so yeah so so let's so let's add an image right a beautiful website uh, looks great with image so how do we add an image first let me grab an image from on splash let me grab something basic okay so got number give you are okay now you are able to see this unsplash screen right how you get images like uh, you can download it to your assets folder or even you can use this technique like copy image address just will copy this url for you i guess my sharing stopped wait so uh i hope you can see this again so yeah i copied the image url so how do i uh, how do i add an image now i could have uh, added the image here like downloaded and loaded it i'll i'll do both things like i have this image grab i'm uploading an asset here you can see wait for a second can you let me see what you guys are asking yeah. wait for just 5 seconds i'll just answer your questions till while this asset is uploading okay wait Let me add another. Okay, let's use this image. Okay, in the meantime, can you take up a question in the chat? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing that only. I'm just seeing my internet is a bit lagging, so I, I'm just checking. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank So I I see Tulsi is asking how to add alphabets in list instead of one two three. Yeah, that that's a good question. Like if you want to add alphabets, I'll show you how it is done. For that, uh, you need an ordered list. Okay. So first, let me change this to ordered list. Okay. 
so now we know that for order it's uh, the standard we have numbers right numbers how can we change this is we can add an attribute to the tag attribute i'll come to later in detail but for now attribute is like a property of the tag okay so sorry so yeah type a let's see if the changes are done so yeah, to see if you can see this yeah a b c this is visible now okay so i what i uh, essentially did is i made this an ordered list and in an ordered list there is an attribute there is a property of ordered list you can change the type of uh, bullets you are using uh, like i have written type a so it will realize that okay alphabetical numbering has to be used so a b c d like that will come i hope that clears your doubt i just revert it back to an ordered list i guess our assets must have uploaded okay i'll use this image only okay i have like use my nursing dhoni's image on my portfolio yeah so uh, what we will do is copy url okay so yeah i'll copy url but when you use glitch you can click on the image and this is the url you need to copy okay so we'll come back to come back to our project and what we'll do is we'll add an image tag now okay let, let us see we should be at the image should be under the about section right what do you guys think let me see yeah it should be under about section that that seems right so in the about section i'll add another tag okay so see carefully you're learning another new tag which is the image tag sorry so on image tag i have to use another attribute source attribute i told you earlier what attributes are like these are like properties of these tags okay so for source i'll i'll set the source to the url which i have copied so how, how i'll do that i'll just put an equal to double quotes and paste the url and then close this tag okay so understand image is also a self closing tag you don't need to add another image tag with black backslash image is a self closing tag you can see but right now it is not at all stylized like it is this big image so we'll add some css to it okay so yeah this image is huge we'll fix it so i i hope you see uh, you have understood what all we have done till now like let me just uh, give a quick brief like we add we uh, changed the heading tags and added a, a, another section another heading about a projects and about us and we also added an image and a list okay so what shall we do next wait so uh, don't you think we should add a footer tag like we should have a contact us section right the user that will be seeing our portfolio should be able to contact us so we'll use a footer for that and for using a footer html has this cool thing called footer tag which easily help us set down a footer and inside footer we'll add an icon okay so i'll, I'll show you how do we add an icon Yes, 
Okay, so just one more thing to add. That will be done. Okay, so now let us first see what changes have been made to our website. Okay, so yeah, this big image is here. And wait for a second. My internet is a bit slow. So you have to bear this one with me. But I guess you can see this block here, right? Yeah, it came. Yeah. So you, you can see we added a symbol for LinkedIn. It It is clickable, right? But we, uh, we haven't added any link for that. So what essentially we did is we made a footer tag. A footer is like the bottom page, uh, like bottom part of a page, which contains your contact information and important information like that. Okay, so what we essentially did is we created this tag A. What does this stand for and why is it here? So it is anchor tag. So what anchor tag does it, it hyperlinks anything you attach it to. Okay, so if, if I have uh, this paragraph, if I, I add an anchor tag before this, like inside this paragraph, I add an anchor tag. And inside it, I write uh, this is Google. Okay, and I used I used an attribute. It's an attribute href, which is which we learned is used to link the pages, link anything to your uh, uh, sorry link, yeah link uh, basically any file to your HTML file. So I'll add google.com. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you the changes. Okay, yeah, I guess you didn't see the code. Sorry. Yeah. So you can see uh, what I did is I added this anchor tag to explain what it does. Like I've added this under this paragraph section and I've added this link here. So you can see to uh, go to the website and see. Okay, this is this turned blue in color. This text is hyperlink. If I click it, if I click it, if you can, uh, you might not be able to see my browser screen. Yeah, uh, if I click it, it takes me to this link, google.com, which is apparently not working because it uses this, this URL. And uh, there is some technical uh, issue related to it. Like if you, if I search for it, it takes me to the URL, which has been provided by glitch slash google.com. So I did not write www. That's why it's not properly working. But you get the point, right? You can link anything to uh, your HTML file, any any file or any uh, website. Sorry, whenever I close this tab, right? I forgot that I have to. Sh I'm sharing. Sorry. Okay. Um, yes. Do you mind sharing your entire screen instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know that that makes it easier. Really Sorry. Yeah. So uh, what you can see is like what we did is what we added this anchor tag and linked it to this text. So what we did back there was we added this anchor tag and we linked it to this icon. So how we added the icon? We use this tag called i. It is used for adding icons, basic majorly. And how we got the icon? easily we uh, we use this library i told you earlier for font awesome which was used from bootstrap it contains these icons and to access it you need to give uh, the class fa fa space fa linkedin to it like this is the just the basic code to make the make the browser run through uh, this class and it will re realize that okay i have to go to font awesome and search for whatever is titled or labeled with this code whatever has this class so it will identify it is this icon and we have used fa3 as an attribute 
to uh, increase the size. I can use uh, other links too, uh, other icons too, if I add like Facebook. So let me show you links to code. Yeah. yeah, this Facebook is here. If I use Instagram, you'll, you'll see Instagram is here, right? I'll just revert it back to LinkedIn. So yeah, LinkedIn is here back, okay. Okay, so this is what it does. And this is this is some data for the browser as to how it should be rendered, okay. So yeah, we have done pretty much amazing things till now. But uh, I do realize that we need to style these things. Like this image is not beautifying the website. In instead, it, it will drive user crazy. Like what is this image, big image in between a website? So we do need to resize it. So uh, what we will do now? OK, first uh, we'll go step by step and stylize our text and then we will stylize our image i'll do that fast okay it's already seven so yeah so uh, let me add a tag here like here uh, you know uh, you must be thinking that uh, if like uh, this is the text here okay so if i want like this part particularly to be bold how do I do that? Right. But some some part particular to be strong in a whole paragraph. Like how do we do that? So there is a basic HTML coding for that. Like I'll show you. I'll add a so this tag is uh, is used to bold any text which is contained between this strong. And it is not a self-closing tag. You need to close it. And uh, let me put the ending here. Right. So yeah, now you can see this part is bold, but not this one. So uh, okay, I want the last line to be. Uh, I want the next line to be italic. In italics, like italics look nice. If you have to put in some nice information out there. So I need another tag. I'll use another tag, em. Right, em. This tag is used to put italics. Any text between here is turned to italics. Right, you can see here. So yeah, this is how you can easily style your paragraphs. And uh, and now we. Have we have added most of our content, right? We have added about section and project section and image, a link to our profile on LinkedIn. So why don't we go and style this in CSS? Like we can add uh, really cool. We can do really cool stuff with CSS. So first we'll first we'll go to style.css and uh, we see this heading is colored in some weird coding, like the color properties. What is this? This is actually the standard uh, way of uh, using color in most programming languages. This is hexadecimal coding. So what happens is that uh, uh, in computers, like uh, we need, when we need to specify some color for particular program, uh, to, uh, for a particular language in a part, in any language or any code, we don't write uh, like red or blue. Instead, we specify the hexadecimal color coding. You can easily find the hexadecimal color of uh, uh, hexadecimal code of whatever color you are looking at uh, in uh, Google. But uh, CSS has this beautiful thing that it allows you to write this. It allows you to do this. Yeah. I wrote the name and it shows me this particular color. But the issue is that it is not true for like all colors. Uh, if I'm not wrong, there uh, there there are 147 of these built-in colors. Like, yeah. So if I must use, wait, okay, oh, so blue. yeah, yeah. So it it's dodge blue in color now. 
if I use sign, it is it will turn into sign. So uh, there are one forty seven of these predefined colors which you can uh, you can easily use. So uh, this is what uh, like we can easily style this color property, and uh, and if we see in body tag, we have specified font family. Sorry, in the body selector, we have specified font family. So what it does is, is it takes a particular family of fonts. You, you guys uh, know right what is a family of font. Uh, if any designer is in the meeting, he must know that uh, a font family is a set of fonts. Like the, the, the typeface is same. If I'm using like Open Sans, Open Sans will be the typeface, which is this. And then we i'll be using different versions of it like open sans bold open sans italic open sans semi bold like that so that forms a font family so uh, what this uh, what this essentially says is that use font family open sans but if that is not available in the browser use helvetica or arial or sans serif right you get it right if you have any doubt right in the chat section okay I hope you are getting this. So basically, what I told is for uh, what this is is that if this is available, use Open Sans. But if some browser, like old browser, like Internet Explorer six or seven, someone is running it on a very old computer, doesn't have it, instead use these ones. You can specify any font family. The benefit with these ones is these are the most common ones and easily available. Sorry for that prompt and easily available across the browser so you won't pro uh, face any trouble and uh, the next is margin so what mar margin does it it uh, like you must all have given exams and uh, an exam exam sheets like there is this big blank sheet given to us and what the first thing we do after writing our names on it we draw margins right we draw margins to restrict the content uh, the the space in which the content should be there. So what margin uh, property does is that only. It restricts, like you you see that this is this is this bit gap between the uh, end of this window and from where the text starts. So that is what I'm talking about. This this is margining. Okay. So uh, the margin the value is specified as three vw. What does vw mean? It means view width. So essentially, the width which we are uh, viewing on a browser, if it is, if it was a full size window, it would be a bit different. So uh, take uh, take parts of it, like if this window, this window is what we are view viewing, right? So it will be divided into hundred parts or such like that, and it will take three parts of that, and and conclude that it is the margin and the content must stay in between these three three view view widths from each side so there are multiple units of margining like there is em rm there's three percent uh, it totally depends on what kind of site you are building uh, the uh, thing you need to use the unit you need to use if i use three percent there's not much difference it is essentially the same so it depends on different units so I'll keep it to three percent only. Okay, so there are different uh, units of margining, which I told you earlier. Like there is pixels, there's percentage, there is a viewport width unit, which is this VW, and viewport height unit, which is VH. Okay, so if we, if I use VH, it will uh, start measuring the margin from here. So let, let us check what is the difference in using VH. I don't think there will be much. Like, yeah, yeah, you, so you see that it came closer to this side because now margining is first done from the top and the bottom. Okay, let me just change that to 3% and it will margin from all the sides basically. Okay, so, so, okay, so, so what shall we do next? Like, we should be uh, changing our second headings color, right? Uh, this doesn't, the black doesn't go well with everything. I already have my paragraphs in black. 
so why use black again so so we'll style h2 we'll what we'll do is sorry sorry, sorry yes two curly braces and under that color we'll write dim gray and yes we need to use this semicolons here yeah so you see it reads this statement it applies it that's how easy it is projects was also an h2 heading so it was also colored like that okay okay so what shall we do next okay so uh, let us do some let me, show, let me show you some basic semantic html what is semantic html is basically it is a way of writing html which is like basic english like if you are writing an article you put it under article tags so we know this about is a section and the project is a section so why not put it in section tags like this uh, these whole things right it will make more sense like that so i'll, I'll close this in section tag i'll just cut it from here and uh, i know this image is inside this i'll put it here okay you won't see the uh, you won't see much difference here i'll i'll switch it to full screen then you will be able to see the difference let me indent it sorry yeah 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 you can see this inside the section tag i have covered the about section so let me cover the project section in another section tag what basically section tag does is it it divides your page into different sections okay so it is nothing difficult to understand it's much easy it is easy early we used to use div tags but uh, since uh, people are nowadays using semantic html which is basically writing html as if it's english so, sorry so that's why it is I guess I won't be able to indent it right now, but I hope you can see the code. It's not very neat, but but yeah, this this hole is one section. Okay, I hope you get it. So uh, I'll I'll show you the difference in new window. Okay, I guess because of the image, there isn't much difference because it is too big. Im the image is too big. Wait. We'll stylize the image and you'll notice the difference. Okay. 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 Let us stylize the image. Hello. Yeah, so let us stylize the image. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a second. My, my browser is freezed for a second. Wait. Sorry. Yeah, yeah so uh, if I have to stylize the image, I need the CSS to understand what this image is, right? So from where it is coming. So I'll add something called ID. Okay. So I'll add an ID. I'll give it an ID of what I which shall I say? Okay, let's let's call it Tony for simplicity's sake. So I have given it an ID. It doesn't bring any uh, major change here, right? you can see there is nothing here so uh, what this does is it assigns this id to to this element so if i am using css or even javascript i can 
use this ID to access this element from the HTML code. How to use an ID? I'll use this hash symbol and write the ID name. Tony, right? Now these curly braces and uh, let me uh, let me change the size. Let me add a sorry height height property should be uh, what do you guys what do you guys think should be a better height property okay uh, let's let's give it a 500 pixels worth of height and uh, to 500 pixels so this is not a uh, uh, let me show you in tab here you can see okay the size is reduced now yeah but it is not uh, not that much so i'll come back here yeah, so let's 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 instead use a uh, viewport and view width like viewport height and viewport width so what i'll do is i'll assign it 20 viewport height like uh, you can imagine this viewport as 100 units okay so according to that you need to assign the height and weight and i'll assign it uh, no wait 20 is this you will not be able to see it properly so i'll assign it 20 view yeah 20 view width will be okay yeah 20 view width yeah. so yeah it doesn't look uh, nice because, uh, because of the size issue but uh, it's, it certainly is resized now right yeah, you can see this this is now resized according to the browser it is now uh, consuming 50 viewport of worth of uh, height and 50, 50, 20 viewport worth of width okay so i guess we have stylized the image so what shall we add next what shall we add next wait because if you have any questions any doubts do write in the meeting section and in the chat section i'll be answering you Okay, it's 7.19 already. Let me see if I can, uh, what else I can do in a short term, then we'll wrap up quickly. Okay. So, uh, you know what, what can I do is, I can, can keep the fit auto. There's this value known as auto. So it automatically sizes the width panel you can use it for height too and let me add a margin we had a margin of uh, three percent would be enough i guess yeah so let me go to this okay so yeah so yeah you can see uh, there's a lot more margin here because uh, first the body margin is there then it is inside a section tag and inside that we have provided a margin so that's why it is coming out like this and uh, what auto width did was it provided a suitable width according to the ratio in which the actual image was given to browser so it doesn't stretch the image like in a bad way like it was it looks nice okay Okay, so, uh, so I guess uh, this is what uh, this is all we can uh, do with your website. You can change colors. You can add more CSS properties. And uh, okay, let's let's change a font. Right, a good font will look nice here. So I'll. I'll I'll change the font. How to change the font is that you add a font property 
and under that you specify the font name right so uh, what shall i use uh, i might use railway railway is this nice font if okay i guess railway is not available wait actually uh, you can head to uh, you can head to font.google.com to actually see what is the basic font name so uh, let, me, let me change this font family to wait a second I'll, I'll just get the font just to show you how it works it is available in the google fonts why is it working okay let's use I guess we are not imported properly from the Google. That's why it's not working correctly. But uh, if you are working on your uh, like laptop or something offline, you can easily change the font. Like, okay, let me change the font weight. What it does, font weight. Let me use a high value like 900. What would it do? Okay, it's it got quite old now if you can see the difference i i guess you might not be able to because the font is already big so so there are these different properties which you can uh, use uh, to stylize your website and basically glitch already provides you with the environment to uh, you know uh, like deploy your website easily what do you need to do is you need to just uh, you need to just click the show button and if uh, uh, you can open it in new tab and see what is the url but if you want this custom url for yourself you can change url and reset it to something what you want or something you want and that way you can easily deploy your website i hope you must have learned something today and so it's already 724 so it's uh it's some i'll just review what we have done till now so we first discovered the this amazing platform glitch and after that we we used a starter file to uh, start the project which was our first website and in that website we we had we saw that this uh, html tag is the basic tag which contains everything which the browser needs to know about a website and uh, and the head tag contains the information about website which user won't see and body tags contain information which user will see okay so that's the basic difference so we learned about headings paragraph sections images lists there's so much to take in in one and a half hour but i hope you must have learned something and so so I guess uh, there must be some questions you might have got so you are feel free to ask anything it's 7:25, so i guess we'll have just a q a right now if anyone has any questions just type it in the chat or if you are comfortable uh, if you're comfortable unmute yourself and do ask okay i just wait for two minutes then i'll 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 show you something, some little secret, a little secret of myself. If, if I wait, let me. Yeah, we're all eagerly waiting for that secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just okay. Let me present again. I'll just share my whole screen. Okay, just for a second. I hope you can see this whole screen, right? You all, in, uh, you all can see this whole yeah, screen. Yeah, we can see. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what I want to tell you is you must have come across some website that you must have liked. Like, okay, how do you make the 
uh, that kind of website so let me just show you an example of like uh, like okay net when yeah, netflix yeah you might want to know how netflix works like who built that what languages do you need to know so there is this beautiful chrome extension called what runs you can get it on uh, you can get it on the uh, chrome store uh, i haven't uh, i will to check it on other browsers but on chrome it runs so what runs basically does is it tells you information about website like the web framework which is being used the javascript frameworks this is much less like i can show you more example like uh, okay the netflix is built on bootstrap who thought like bootstrap is a beginner level framework but uh, but you also see that it uh, react is used here and uh, not much is here but uh, like like you can give me in the chat you can write some website and i'll show you how how they have been built okay so let's let's uh, which website can we go to next you give me some example in the chat if you want dscnitwkela.tech yeah you can we can check bsc's website too dot tech okay yeah so let let it load and then we'll run a what run scan on it okay it takes sometimes it takes some time because the server is slow and it gets a lot of information i guess the server is down we can check other websites too okay i it's bit it's a bit slow right now what what essentially it does is it uh, it tell it tells you what technologies were used in building website like let me take you to a random website okay so so i came across this portfolio agency this they have this beautiful website with crazy animation you can see right if you you must think that yeah what must they be using to make animations like these and the the whole ui is beautiful so let us run a what run scan and yeah you can see here so the widgets used here are google plus for analytics they use google it is programmed in node js it even tells you the font they have been using so on most work website it works the best uh, like the uh, website which are pub in public domain uh, you can see javascript frameworks which are used and uh, i guess their web own website is a bit down but uh, if you want to learn about these frameworks you can you can get to the documentation like if i click the no more it takes you to the documentation page what twin max is like it is a javascript server uh, it is a javascript framework so yeah this is how this extension works and so if you want to know what pretty much uh, your favorite website has been built on you can use it easily to look at websites and go through their content and recognize like what frameworks are there also if you are a big, going to be a web developer you might want to use this thing the console which is there in the uh, chrome tab it is this beautiful debugging environment which is a bit complex to understand right now but uh, once you uh, get your hands on design some websites and uh, look up for the technologies which have been used in making websites you will realize okay so what runs is essentially the uh, it is essentially the extension you can find on chrome store okay so i guess that will be all from my side if you have any questions feel free to ask i'm i'm waiting for your questions right now and stop sharing at this yeah guys anyone has any questions in a bit of doubt i'll i'll help you out i'll hope i can clear it so feel free I think everyone pretty much got what you were trying to tell, so hopefully there are no doubts. Okay, I hope that's the case. Yeah, me too.
fingers crossed um we would love to have your feedback guys on the chat like how how much did you enjoy your session like what were your thoughts what could be improved yeah sure it would be lovely if you guys uh, mm-hmm. just wrote a one or two line feedback mm-hmm, yeah any even a word would do that's the thing we yeah just do it you know Okay, awesome. Good to see some amazing. Yep, nice. Okay. Thank you guys for these comments. Mm. If you have got any critical uh, suggestion like how we could improve these workshops or anything for the September series, you can drop it in the chat. We'll surely take action on it. Krishnan, if you want, you can drop in your Twitter or some handle through which they can reach you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll I'll drop my portfolio website link here. It's open source right now. You can view my code too. How I built that, and I'll also drop my Instagram handle where I'm mostly active. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, this is my portfolio. The repo is available on GitHub. I I I think you will be able to see it. I've not made it private. Okay, my, my Instagram is not working. I'll just uh, drop in my ID. You can search for it. Okay. Yeah, you can check my portfolio. Or mostly all my links are there. All the social handles and the GitHub and LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile link. You can easily go go there and click on those to follow me and interact with me. So if any doubts, please feel free to stay and ask. Um, I think I think they're all cool. They're all good. Um, so thank you everyone. Thank you, Krishna, too, for this amazing session. Mm, I hope that thank you for considering me to be part of this great thing. September yeah. sessions have been very helpful for beginners. Yeah, no issues, man. It's great to have you here. Thanks for the session, and I hope everybody learned something useful, and we inspired you to make sure. websites of your own. Mm, good to see you here. Thanks for joining. Stay safe and good night. Yeah. Okay, good night, everyone. Good night. Yeah, you can leave, guys. Thanks for joining. Bye bye.